Today we are going to discuss a mistake I see so many Christians making trying to prove that the Pope is false. But I'm going to give you six reasons you should stop saying this going forward. And the last reason in today's video is the most significant of them all. In the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 23, Jesus talked about calling no man father and rabbi or teacher. And the fact of the matter is, I see so many Christians today saying, look, the Pope is false because he's called Father. Now, the first reason why you should stop using an argument like this, if you've ever done this before, is because this will put you in hot water really quickly. Let me show you what I mean by looking at one passage in the Bible to start. This is from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14 to 17. And you can see this is the Apostle Paul here saying, He writes not these things to shame you, but as his beloved sons, he warns. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. And if you just scroll down to verse 17, notice what he says. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, most people reference him today as Timothy, who is my beloved son. If you want to condemn the Pope for being called father because of what Jesus said in Matthew 23, then by that standard, we're going to have to condemn the Apostle Paul because of what he said here, as I just showed you in 1 Corinthians. And just before you start thinking something along the lines of, oh no, but Paul is kosher, he's legitimate. There are many professing Hebrew Israelites who try to condemn the Apostle Paul because of the passage I just showed you in regards to Matthew 23 and what Jesus said. They are going to have the same problem as you if you make this argument against the Pope, for example, because they're going to be even bigger trouble because the next example I want to give you in today's video, point number two, is even closer to home than the Apostle Paul. And we're going to look at the Lord Jesus' brother himself, one of them anyway, the Apostle James. This is from James's epistle, chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. And notice what it says. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. So there's a couple of things I want you to realize there. Firstly, we wouldn't only have to condemn the Apostle Paul, right? Just as I showed you, we would have to condemn the Apostle James because he's saying here, don't be quick to call yourself a master. And this is one of the most famous passages in the New Testament where it's encouraging people not to just be quick to teach people, etc. Now, some people may try to say, look, you know what? James was just saying this for other people. But as I highlighted and added emphasis when I was actually reading it, two times, as you can see here, highlighted in pink as well, he says, we. So James was clearly identifying himself amongst a group of masters. Next, we can look at another close person who's very key in regards to the formulation of the New Testament writings. Now we're going to look at Luke, the physician. Now we can look at the book of Acts and we can look at Acts chapter 13, as you can see here, verse one to two. And notice what Luke documents here. He says, now there were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger. So did you notice how Luke in Acts of the Apostles is documenting there were prophets and there were ultimately teachers? And these are some of the most significant videos I feel I need to make, why? Because I'm of the mindset that if we come to the table with the wrong sort of argument, if we're engaging with people who don't believe like we believe, right? And we come with a weak argument and it gets torn down, that is a step closer to falling into some sort of false doctrine or some heresy because we brought out a false argument and because it was easily taken down, we start to believe that everything the person is saying is actually legitimate when that's not actually the case. Now, I'll just mention the fourth reason why you should stop using this argument briefly. And that is based on Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 12. Now, this is commonly referenced as the fivefold ministry. And one of the ministries that God set up ultimately after the resurrection for the church is the office of teachers. Now, it is hard to top people like the Apostle Paul and even James of the Lord's brother. But number five is a good run for the money because we're going to look at the apostle Peter, who's the, basically the leader of the 12 disciples. 
and one of Jesus's three closest disciples based on the gospel narratives. And we could look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 6, when it's talking about how women should basically behave themselves. And it looks and it gives us an example, as you can see here, of the wife of Abraham, Sarah. And notice what it says, whose daughters ye are. Peter goes to the completely opposite side of the spectrum, and he's not even talking about men here, he's talking about women christian women being the daughters spiritually ultimately of sarah if the women are the daughters of sarah what would that make sarah ultimately that would make her the mother so to speak and is that a surprise considering abraham one of the common things he's referenced today is the father of faith now like i said at the start of this video the sixth point in today's video is the most significant and i want to spend a little bit of time showcasing to you why that is matthew 23 i notice what it says it says in verse 1 to 2 jesus here is speaking to the multitudes and to his disciples and he's saying the scribes and the pharisees sit in moses's seat whatever they tell you to do do it basically but don't do after their works why for they say and they don't do this is vital to what we're going to get to in a moment in regards to calling any man father or rabbi which is basically teacher or master etc and notice what he says in verse 4 he says they bind heavy burdens for others and they put them on other people's shoulders but they themselves will not carry the weight of which they're basically trying to give other people to manage and in verse 5 he says but all their works they do for to be seen of men and this is vital to what jesus is going on to say in the next couple of verses they make broad their phylacteries and they enlarge the borders of their garments so jews at that time right and some people even still to this day they would have little scriptures basically and they would basically put them on their garments now as we scroll down what do we see jesus continues to say they love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues he says and he says they love greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi he's talking about these hypocrites basically who do all of this outward stuff to be glorified by man so people can say look teacher master rabbi and notice what jesus says next because of all of this stuff he says in verse 8 to 10 but be ye not called rabbi for one is your master christ and all ye are brethren and call no your father upon the earth for one is your father which is in heaven and he ties this off nicely by saying but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant the reason contextually why jesus was saying don't be called rabbi or don't be called father or don't be called master was because these individuals were doing all of this stuff to be praised by men not because being called a teacher, rabbi, or a master, or a father in some sort of sense was the issue. This is why I said the sixth point in today's video was the most crucial, because the context of a passage is always going to be vital and will always open up our understanding even greater. So make sure you don't say this kind of argument as we started today's video with against the Pope. But this is something we should all be speaking about more often, and even unbelievers are exposing it as well.